What's up guys, Franco Mobile Homes here. So one of our uh, staff asked me to make a quick video to kind of talk about what we do and why we do it. Uh, so I figured I'd just make one for generally everybody for the public so that way we can really share our vision, our passion and why we're passionate about it um, and our ambitions and what our plans are. So basically, uh, we're going to try to make this really quick, really informative, the reasons why, quick little story background, uh, and then uh, we'll make this quick and informative for you guys. So um, really quick, why we work with mobile homes and whatnot. Um, I'm very passionate about affordable housing. Quick summary, we had, me personally, we went through, our family went through a rough patch where our parents split. We were very, very low income. We struggled even finding a place to rent out in this area. We're in the Silicon Valley, by the way, where housing demand is very difficult, especially affordable housing demand. Um, ha home prices are very high. Rent prices are very high. So after getting through that, I really became uh, very, uh, I had the question of why is it like this and why is it that it seems like the rich are getting richer and the poor are just stuck here um, and they can't get out of renting to ownership and how can we bridge that gap between a, a renter between the middle and lower class to become eventually a homeowner uh, and to own an asset um, that's something i grew really passionate about trying to figure this out um, so we'll, we'll, we'll go on to this little slide deck that uh, Christina made. So it'll kind of bring a visual to, to the, uh, whoa. Let me move this real quick. Visual to what we're talking about. So really quick on the problem here. So housing affordability, it's super limited. Um, there's not a lot of affordable housing options, right? So to sum it up, the quick problem is, we have a lot of population growth in this area, uh, more than we can, more than we have homes available. So everything in economics is kind of on that supply and demand chain. So what's happening is we're having a very low amount of supply for the amount of people that want to be here. So, which is driving the price high. Now, buying real estate keeps getting harder and harder with time um, because pr that price is getting driven so high. So the barrier of entry is even getting harder. Uh, average price point in Santa Clara County is almost 1.4 million for single family, and it's it's insane. So, how do we get um, something that can move the needle to help this lower class and this middle class people to be able to get that step up towards ownership? Because when you're paying that rent consistently, it's hard to save up, hard to um, get to be able to have the ability to purchase a 1.4 million dollar house. So. Yeah, so we're on limited housing, and unfortunately, you know, I hate, I'm usually a very positive guy, but it's getting worse and worse every day. Um, the supply is getting worse. Um, and how do I go to the next slide? Let's do this. So here's kind of a breakdown of Alameda County back in the day. It's a pie chart. This is pretty current. I mean, 2016, you have uh, what it's showing here is kind of like the very, very low income people here. Um, a little above median um, income here. And this big gap of people that are the middle class that where I feel like if we can help these people get housing uh, or these are the people that we can help the best to be able to transition. Um, if we can keep, provide them with a platform and a solution and the education and knowledge to be able to make that shift. So uh, construction demand is also unfortunately making this gap get worse between the rich and the poor because um, as mentioned uh, supply and demand we need more homes we need more living square footage and mainly affordable home housing uh, living square footage out here in the silicon valley that's why when you see construction they're always like uh, vertical and high density housing when they're building homes nowadays in this area so one of one problem that we're going to be seeing in the future is a huge a huge part of our the people that are building our homes the construction workers the labor workers are a, a huge chunk of them are boomers 50 and above now these people are going to get 
tired and want to retire um, and they're going to be exiting the industry. Now, there's people like us, millennials, where, you know, are all about tech um, jobs and there's so many different options as far as uh, uh, career that not a lot of people are wanting to get into becoming a construction worker. So that kind of, we're going to have a huge shortage of how construction is going to be laid out in the next few years uh, when we have that, when we start to see that shortage of labor. So housing demand is the way it is right now. It's only going to get tighter and tighter if we can't figure out a way to build more housing. So um, as I mentioned, I kind of saw, I really am very, and I mean this, that I'm passionate about trying to figure out a way that we can get this fixed. So looked into how can we create more affordable housing? How does all this stuff work? You know, how can we develop land and all that stuff? It turns out it takes a ton of capital, takes a ton of political lobbying, and all this kind of stuff. And um, one of the things I didn't mention here is the barrier to entry for real estate is very difficult to purchase. Um, if you understand the structure of how real estate sales work is that typically they're going to go for the most qualified buyer and the strongest looking buyer um er, you know and the strongest offer every time when there's a purchase made so that's why you see a lot of real estate that's out there today are getting 20 plus offers sometimes and unfortunately when you don't have that much of a financial structure or the economics of your family isn't that high it's difficult to to uh, get yourself in a position to where, hey, this is me, this is why I should be the best offer for this house, especially when you're competing with investors. Um, that's something that I really am kind of against, but, you know, I'm, actually I'm not against the upper class, you know, doing what's better for them, but I it does um, pain me to know that you're kind of competing with two, par two different um, elements here. So you have, these people that are, let's call them the rich, that are just purchasing this real estate and grabbing it to basically rent out as an Airbnb or a rental income just to expand their portfolio to get richer, right? Now, and then you also have these people that are trying to purchase the home just because it want, they want it to be for their family and a resident-owned situation where they can expand their well-being, expand their financial portfolio to just get to that point of, above middle class, right? And, and, and everyone's, there's a ton of hardworking people out there. It's just, how do we get past that, right? So then I started researching and learning and I learned about mobile home parks and mobile homes. And I realized these were actually a kind of a hidden gem, I'd say. It's a super underrated asset class that is throughout Santa Clara County and underutilized and unoptimized and this is actually i was like man there's so much room for improvement so much room to optimize this uh this asset class and how can we use this as a tool to help the lower class or the middle class be able to uh make that step up right so let's go on here so why mobile homes kind of like it's a budget friendly solution you can actually get more space for square foot dollar when you look at it financially and the biggest thing here in these mobile home parks and the way that they're zoned um they actually in order to purchase this in a mobile home park in in almost all cases it has to be resident owned and what does that mean exactly that means that if you want to purchase a mobile home in a mobile home park that has to be your primary residence uh, and it has to be for you to live there you can't purchase this in hopes that you can rent it out uh, as an investment uh, or as a rental so what that what that does and what i love about this is that you are immediately eliminating the competition which are the investors and um uh, and whatnot but its sole purpose when you're purchasing this is for that uh, first part that I mentioned where it's a family that's going to be able to purchase this just to better their lives and better their position, right? So I love that about this um, and I saw opportunity here and that's what we're going to talk about today. So what is our mission? It our, This is our mission at our company is to enhance, it's very much like Tesla, but enhance housing affordability by transforming 
lives through mobile homes. And that's really our mission is how can we transform even if it was just one or two lives at a time, but how can we do that at scale? And, and for me, I see this as creating a platform that will create a tool where this will help create opportunity and options and open that door um, for people to have affordable housing in this area. Okay. So let me pause this real quick because I need a charge. My laptop needed a charge. Anyway, so this is, um, so quick history, we won't bore you on this, but this is the Silicon Valley right here. So nobody really expected, these mobile home parks were built in the 60s and the 70s, and nobody expected them to, look, you know, high density housing, tons of people moving to this area. Um, nobody expected that when it came to this. So basically, Anyways, in the 60s, 70s, they didn't expect there to be all this population growth, high density housing, all that. So this is kind of the landscape of the Silicon Valley back then. Here's another photo, um, farmland. Here's, so as mentioned, these mobile home parks were actually put here, meant for temporary housing for farmers and labor workers. Um, they didn't really, you know, they didn't have all the thought process thinking, of worrying about how the housing structure is gonna be. So this is a mobile home park right here. Here are two mobile home parks, another mobile home park right here for temporary housing. So enough of that. But here's an example of a mobile home park. This is a map on the left side of, a of all the mobile home parks in the Bay Area. And people don't know, <laughs> some people don't know that these exist. Even real estate agents don't realize that they're in prime, prime location. Um, this one that I'm showing you right here, we're gonna switch real quick to this shot. Um, but just to make a point, I want you to see this mobile home park is right in the middle between Milpitas and San Jose. Um, and there's a ton of parks that are in this area. Going back to this, this is, um, oops, this is, a huge park with 618 spaces, um, tons of lots, tons of acreage. Uh, and as mentioned, this was built in early seven, in 1972, uh, back when it was farmland everywhere. So here's kind of where the numbers make sense. And a lot of this stuff, uh, this is where I can kind of visualize and show what I'm, the point I'm trying to make here is that lower class, the middle class, we're stuck in this renting uh, or the people that are stuck in this renting situation were kind of trapped, you know, because like, for example, me, I had to find somewhere to rent for our family and it was about 3000 a month, which is pretty average in this area. So when you're paying 3000 a month, um, I should have this math pulled up, but you're paying 3000 a month. People don't realize you average, you live in a home for about seven to eight years. Okay. So because we're stuck in this, uh, loop and we don't really think about it, we want to, I'm going to do the math here so that I can put it. Okay. So let's say you're paying 2000 a month on rent. People don't really visualize how much that is. And, and when you're renting, you don't get any of that money back. You're not getting any asset value. You're not getting any tax write-offs. All of that is disappearing, right? So at 3000 a month, every year, you're losing $36,000. All that's gone. Right. So how can we optimize that money that we're spending? And people, if people are living, if you live in this home for five years, that's um, that's one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. That's gone. Right. You never see that again. Uh, you still have to continuously pay for housing. You live in this home for 10 years. That's three hundred sixty thousand dollars. Fifteen years, five hundred forty thousand dollars. I mean, people don't realize and they don't want to actually step back and look at what they're spending and how can we optimize all this money that we're spending and transition to, that's why these real estate owners are getting more and more wealth because they have, they understand this now, but as we mentioned before, to get from renting to owning a single family home, it's very difficult. And that's where this mobile home structure really comes in because one of the things, um, some people are turned off by this, uh, but they don't really understand it, but you know, on, this is kind of what it looks like to own a mobile home, right? So you don't actually own the land. You, you pay rent for the land, but you own the asset above it and you own the contract 
of the lease that it sits on. So um, what does that mean? So like, let's say you're spending 3000 a month on rent and then you decide to make a purchase for a mobile home right here. You're able to, let's say you're spending 3000 a month on a mobile home. You're able to capture more than half of that, um, that for example, uh, in 10 years, that 360000 uh, a huge portion of that is going towards your asset value. You're paying your mortgage on that home. Um, also, you're getting tax write-offs. And, and uh, also, these homes, these mobile homes, contrary to what a lot of people believe, they really appreciate as well. Um, now, this is kind of unique in metro areas like the Silicon Valley, but you'll see a lot of these 70s homes, they, they appreciate. Um, and that's hard for some people to believe, but it is the truth. And you can you can look at the history of that and we can get into that on another video. But the goal is to get you in a better financial uh, structure or better economics for your family to get into this step right here so that one day you can, whether you're really relieving some of that financial burden and then get into owning a single family home later, okay? So next slide is... Now, zooming into this mobile home park, you can kind of see that the, when these homes were built in the 60s, 70s, they weren't really optimized um, to make use of the land, right? So you got these two single wides here, and we'll go to the next slide. This is kind of what um, these single wide or these uh, 60s and 70s mobile home park uh, mobile homes look like. So you got the metal exterior, you have very little insulation. The way they're built, as mentioned, was temporary housing. They didn't really care about coding. Um, as much as they do now. And there wasn't as much knowledge and resources as, and materials that they do uh, now in 2020 or 2021, right? So these homes have foam roofs, uh, metal exterior, and the fire safety on these are very unfortunate. I've helped many uh, tragic situations with, with fires uh, uh, in these homes and they burn up in minutes. And, and you know, they have the, the way they're built, it's just not... Um, to the standards that there are for new construction today. So this is where we really, this is where I really thought about it. And I'm like, why is this in such prime location, prime area? And this land is, has these types of homes that aren't optimized for the modern day, for the 2020 um, year and for the Silicon Valley lifestyle that people are looking for. You know, the location is perfect. Uh, the asset class uh, is decent, and how can we make this type of housing more sexy, you know, more attractive, more livable, more square footage, using up that land um, and building more uh, living square footage for families that uh, want to make a step up. So what we did is we, we let's, how do I go to the next slide here? Here's an example of a project that we did where we picked up one of these single wides, just like this right here. So if you look at it, it's a one bedroom, one bath, 670 square feet. So if you kind of imagine that, you probably at most, probably living would would have a family of three living here if you feel comfortable with doing that. And you know, all the materials are pretty old, whatnot. And um, anyways, so remember our, our vision is that we have to kind of, in order to, uh, slow down that gap that's that's uh, that's opening. I mean, between the we, anyways, we have to create more living square footage. So, with this home right here, it was an old single wide. Then we started planning and really designing how can we optimize this land uh, to that sexy Silicon Valley housing that we need. Right. So here's a floor plan of what we did, and with that, we were able to design a home that's a three bedroom, two bath. 1500 square foot home right now with this you can eat you can you can house more people you can um you can allow uh what do you call it you can house more family members and stuff like that so i'm gonna switch slides for a sec so you can actually see what we built is right here so you got your three bedrooms right here you got your dining area living room kitchen uh, and your two baths okay so we're gonna go in Two. This is what, you know, we really had the question of why can we not have beautiful, sexy mobile homes with the materials and the standards of what 
uh, new construction is built today, and we use a lot of uh, we use a lot of resources of, of the materials they use, the safety standards they use, and and when we build and design these homes. So same with the floor plans, we build these with a huge open floor plan in the front because that's how we like to live nowadays. So we have to have this. We like to have this space where we can entertain um, and use up this space to to share with family members, right? So having a concept of an island, um, having that open area with the entertainment room, this is what we're going for. And we're really trying to move the needle and create uh, beautiful, sexy housing. So just do a quick walkthrough here so you can kind of get a vibe of it. Oh, let me show the kitchen. But basically there's the kitchen there. You got the hallway. Um, this isn't why I'm here to show you, but. But there's a guest bath. You got your your um, guest bedrooms right there, and then we'll go to the master real quick. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but here's the master bedroom, you know, and bathroom, master bathroom. You got your walk-in closet. As you can see right there his and her sink, shower, you know. Um, it basically, the what we're trying to do here is really improve the standards of mobile home living, and especially in an area like this. This is something that people would be comfortable living in, right? So let's go back to the slides. Now, how are we doing this? Um, this is kind of a quick little timeline of what we're doing. Um, basically, we'll, dem we'll split demo the home, redo the foundation with the space rock aggregate, um, build a home and factory, deliver it, and we'll close it up. And then you got your finished project product. Uh, which is that home that you guys saw okay so another before and after here's a single wide um, a new home the exterior it's a quick little visual here that i didn't really know where to plug it but in san jose you got this three hundred seventy thousand uh, dollar one bedroom one bath apartment 648 square feet um, that you can purchase and this ended up getting sold for multiple offers right now you got this mobile home that we built going for 335,000. You know, you do got a, the space rent there, but you got double the square footage, sexy, brand new home, quartz countertops, all white cabinets, stainless steel appliances, three bedroom, two bath. So this is the type of stuff that we're trying to create more and more opportunities so that people can um, have a place to own. Um, is this the end of my slides? Here's another before and after. I think we're finishing up here, but basically wanted to end this off by really recapping on our mission and why we're doing this is to enhance affordable affordability and create more opportunities. But we're really, every single time we do a transaction, we know for a fact that we're transforming live, lives through mobile homes. So um, that's how we'll finish off this little video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully this, you know, our main goal with this is really to educate more people because a lot of about this option, because a lot of people don't even know that this mobile home living style is available. Uh, they don't know that it can be as sexy as you can see in this picture. They don't know that these are located in actually prime locations where you don't have to commute to Modesto or Tracy or, or to a far out location, but can still live in this area and have a decent home to live in. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. I, I plan to make a few more of these and uh, let us know if you can follow us, that would be awesome. Uh, we're, our Instagram is at Sexy Mobile Homes and our website's www.franco.tv. So hopefully you enjoyed this and thanks for watching guys. Take care, bye.